Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to talk about the new summer FAQ, FAQ 2, uh, Electric Boogaloo, perhaps, uh, the FAQ that we all really hoped we wouldn't need, but we did, and, well, it's FAQ here, and now there's even more questions than we had before. So... This answered a whole bunch of questions that we had from the previous FAQ, corrects some errors, it updates a bunch of wording, um, a bunch of stuff that wasn't elite before is elite now, so that seems pretty consistent and comprehensive and makes sense. Um, it covers some new ground on things, but not a ton. Um, I'm not gonna go over every single little change that was made, only the ones that are like really changing something. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that are just a slight change in wording that updates it to you know whatever their current common dictionary vernacular thing says it should be um it, that do, it doesn't necessarily actually change fundamentally what something does it's it's just making it look prettier um i'm not going to go over all of the things that got changed to elite um but just as a quick overview, pretty much everything that you would think of that is a small elite unit of three or two models that doesn't have command probably is now elite. Like Varengard, for example, those are now elite, which was comically wrong that they were not elite before. So I'm gonna start off with the core rules, then the GHB, and then go through each of the battle tomes. Anything that didn't really have a significant change, I'm just gonna skip over. Um, so if your army is not in here, that means that nothing really significant changed. So without further ado, the core rules. So, if you get a command ability for free, you can't use the same one again in that phase. So that fixes a bunch of questions that we had, specifically like the ones from the core battalions where you're able to use uh, one of the generic command abilities for free. Um, and there was some question of whether or not that counted towards your one use per phase of that ability. The answer is yes, it does. So you're just getting a free command ability. Um, this is also the uh, command trait in Blessed Sons for Nurgle has the same issue where you're getting a free command ability that otherwise uh, you would have to pay for. You cannot use it twice in the same phase. Um, here's one right off the rip that is going to be controversial and people are upset about already. Uh, ward saves are ward saves unless they're not ward saves. Um, that's basically what they said. So we all thought that all of those abilities where you're negating wounds or mortal wounds were now wards. But wards are instead something very specific that are triggered before the wound or mortal wound is allocated. And then there's a whole bunch of other rules that trigger after the wound or mortal wound is allocated. So you have to carefully read each of these abilities now and figure out which ones have an ability that triggers before the wound is allocated or after the wound is allocated. If it's after the wound is allocated, then it stacks with a ward. So you can have essentially two ward saves. Going in the opposite direction, the bodyguard abilities, that is when you say have a hero that can pass off wounds to a unit on a four plus, that is being made uh, that's triggering before the wound or mortal wound is allocated. Therefore, you cannot take a ward save in addition for those wounds. You get that instead of a ward save. These are very complicated little technical rules, and I hate them. I hate that they did this. This is not fun. 
don't don't rules lawyer us. This is I'm I'm not happy about this change for really just like having fun in the game sense. Like this is gonna cause a whole bunch of like um actuallys, and I really hate that. Um, okay, if you set up an additional faction terrain feature, i.e. the uh, Feculent Gnarl Maw and the Sylvaneth Awakened Wildwoods, if you set them up after the battle begins, you apply the same setup rules as they're, uh, they are on the War Scroll. So, if it says it has to be X inches away from other terrain features and X inches away from uh, objective markers, then you still have to do that. And in addition to any other restrictions that might be there from the thing allowing you to set it up. Like, uh, for example, second, setting up feculent gnarl maws will also require you to have that gnarl maw more than nine inches away from an enemy unit when it's set up. Finally, objectives on the border of a territory are considered to be within that territory, but not wholly within that territory. And holy Jesus, why did they have to do this? Again, um, there's a, a bunch of WTFs for me kind of out of the gate here, and I don't want to be sounding too negative, but these are like, come on, guys. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't want this weird granularity of rules. Like, let's just make stuff make sense. Either it's there or it's not. It's a spec on the battlefield. That's what an objective is. It is, it, it, it is, according to the rules, I believe it is, you know, a one millimeter by one millimeter spot on the board. So technically it would be within, but not wholly within. But that is like, I think of it more as a, like a, a zero dimensional point. Anyway. little more on the core rules. If a unit is a monster and it has more than one model, each model can carry out a monstrous rampage, if applicable. Now, this does not mean that your unit of three Gargants can all stomp. That is not what this says. You are still limited to each monster getting one separate ability and only using each rampage once per charge phase. So, if you charge in that unit of three Gargants, yes, one can stomp and one can roar and one can titanic duel perhaps, but they can't all stomp, they can't all roar, they all have to be different because they're all each individually a different monster for purposes of that rule. And finally, terrain that is demolished and had the impassable rule still stays impassable. Similarly, a rule when a terrain feature that was a wildwood is demolished, it also remains a wildwood. It just loses all of the rest of its rules. Kind of weird, but let's keep moving on. General's Handbook. Now here's a change that uh, I think a lot of people are really happy that this got resolved. Power Struggle. What the issue with this was is this scenario requires you to hold objectives for two consecutive turns in order to score. And the question was, what happens if your opponent takes control of that objective during their turn between your two turns, and then you take it back? The answer is, as long as at the end of two of your consecutive turns you control the objective, then you score the point. It doesn't matter if in the intervening time that your opponent controlled the objective for some period of time. That's irrelevant, it's just checking. Did you control it at the end of this turn? Check. It, did you control it at the end of the subsequent turn? Check, then you score. 
Savage gains. Uh, this is a change again to the way it's scored. Now you're scoring two victory points for each objective that you control that is not on the border of either player's territory. Um, I believe previously it was you could only score one of them rather than two. So this is basically back to old Battle for the Past rules. I'm all about it. I love that scenario. This is a general overview. This came up in every FAQ for a battle tome that has coalition units, so I'm just going to cover it off the top. All of the coalition rules got cleaned up, but the Schrodinger's battle line didn't get addressed. So, coalition units don't count towards the number of battle line units in your army. However, it doesn't say that they lose the battle line battlefield role. Therefore, some people are making the argument that that means they can still be reinforced twice. Others say it is not counting as a battle line unit for your army, therefore it can only be reinforced once. It would have been really great for Games Workshop to give us some clarity on this, but they didn't. Um, units with the Chaos God marks, uh, Korn, Nurgle, Zinch, Slanesh, if they don't have the Mark of the Gods keyword, they cannot be coalition units. I'm not sure what that applies to, but okay. Soul Blight Grave Lords. Uh, upshot, Vile Transference just got completely rewritten. Um, this used to go off on a four and have different range and a whole bunch of stuff. The, the basic roll dice equal to the enemy's wound characteristics for each six. It's offers you do a mortal wound and you heal one to the caster. Um, everything else about the spell change, though. Also on zombies, we got some additional clarification on their newly dead rule. This is just adding additional rules about the setup of those models when uh, that you get when an opposing model is slain. It's pretty standard, you know, when you ha they have to be within an inch of a model in the unit. They can only be set up within three inches of an enemy unit if a model in the unit is already within three inches of an enemy unit. And the models added to this unit cannot take it above its maximum size. That is probably the most meaningful change here that um, they can't go over max size. Not that it necessarily happens all that often with zombies because they're so weak defensively, but it, it could happen and now it can't. Beasts of Chaos are Ungor Raiders. Uh, instead of getting rerolls to wound and hit, um, their rule has been changed to plus one to wound for shooting attacks when it has 10 or more models in the unit. Um, a lot cleaner and continuing the trend of getting rid of re-rolls out of the game pretty much completely. Like There's very little left. Cities of Sigmar, they fixed their oops. Hollow Heart Wizards still now know two spells from the lore of Whitefire. Um, Hollow Heart, still really good. It was good even, you know, with the oopsie where they only got one spell. Um, but I, this brings it back up to being one of the best sub-factions that Cities of Sigmar has to offer, if not the best. Uh, Daughters of Cain, Marathi got her Rend 2 back on her big staff. That was another oopsie that snuck through that they uh, messed up in the previous FAQ. Caradron Overlords. So if you cast a predatory spell with spell in the bottle, it is not controlled by the bearer. They're not a wizard, so they can't control that endless spell. Also, if you fly high at any time, you can make a normal move. So when you get a normal move, such as the Zilfin special rule, when you get to make that normal move as a result of a special rule, you can always fly high when you do that. 
for ogre ma, ma tribes uh relics of the everwinter the rhyme shroud um it was formerly rerolls to hit now it is uh subtract ones to hit for attacks made with missile weapons that target the bearer um definitely more powerful and also getting rid of rerolls which are two good things uh nice little buff for ma tribes uh i don't know if necessarily that's an artifact people are taking but hey it's there ossiarch bone reapers this is one that everybody that played obr was waiting for Command abilities that use Relentless Discipline points don't have the once per phase restriction like ordinary command abilities do. So you can use Shield Wall a whole bunch of times. You can still use up all the crazy amounts of RDP that you accumulate each turn. This is a good change. It makes OBR function the way that we all thought it was supposed to. So OBR back in business. Um, Archon the Black, he also just got updated as well, probably from an oopsie from the last FAQ. He can cast Arcane Bolt any number of times now, so just like Daddy Nagash, he can machine gun Arcane Bolts. Skaven. So the Vermin Lord Warpseer, this is just clarifying the Scry Orb change. Um, previously, this was. Uh, reroll attacks, I'm um, sorry, reroll saves um, for attacks that target the model. Now it's plus one to save, and they just added the bit at the end about, you know, you can toss it for D6 mortal wounds, but for the rest of the battle, you don't get the plus one to save. I think that just wasn't in the previous incarnation of the FAQ. Giant rats, for some reason, got a buff. <laughs> um, they uh, add one to wound rolls for attacks made by the unit while it's holy with it, or while it has six or more models um, and the range characteristic is two inches if it has six or more models so for some reason giant rats also getting better Slaves to Darkness. This is kind of a big one. Archeon, the Eye of Sheeran. Um, formerly, this was reroll all sixes to hit for Archeon. Now it's once per game at the start of your hero phase. You can choose to use it. And if so, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target the unit until your next hero phase. So, the debuff to your opponent is stronger, but it is once per battle until your next hero phase. So it's much more restrictive as to when you can use it. I'm not sure if this is a net plus or a net minus. It's situational. Um, Archeon's a boss either way. I don't think this change really matters. Um, I think this is just another victim of wanting to get rid of rerolls and minus one to hit him all the time would have been absurd. So once per game sounds a little bit better. Sons of Bamat Longshanks. Um, there's a lot of words on this page, but they basically just mean that Longshanks effectively fly. Um, they ignore everything that they're moving across. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between this and fly actually is. Um, I think they just didn't want to say that uh, that gargants fly. So here we are. Sylvaneth, um, awakened wildwoods are wildwoods. Who knew? Uh, Winterleaf got a change to its command ability. Formerly, it was roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit for each six plus. It suffers a mortal wound. Now you pick a unit making a shooting attack, and for each six to hit, it causes a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. Wrath of the Ever Chosen. This is our last one up here. For the Munificent Wanderers, for Nurgle. The one last gift uh, command trait 
it was changed to um, unmodified hits of one do a mortal wound to the attacking unit. Previously, it was sixes. So this no longer non-bows with the wither stave, which makes your opponent re-roll their sixes to hit. So now they're re-rolling their sixes to hit and they're doing mortal wounds to themselves on their ones to hit. So pretty sweet. Um, that's just another random buff for Nurgle, although the changes to terrain placement rules up in the core rules section is another debuff to Nurgle Trees, but hey, we do what we can. All right, so that is it for now, guys. I hope this was informative for you. I hope I didn't miss anything that you thought was important in the FAQs. If I did, feel free to drop it down in the comments below. If I got anything wrong, feel free to drop it in the comments down below. Um, if you just wanna say hi and that you love me, you can put a comment down below. You can support us on Patreon. You can go join our Facebook group. You can at me on Twitter. And of course, as always, you can like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Very important things to do on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, turn on your notifications if you are a subscriber. That way you get a little notification every time I upload a new video. Now, at some point, I should probably make a video about the importance of actually having a YouTube account if you are just a viewer so that you can have subscriptions and your likes create uh, little playlists for you. Things like that. You can help find new things better. It improves the YouTube algorithm use for you. But anyway, that is all for now. That's a different video entirely on the virtues of having a YouTube account as opposed to just being a passive user. Oh, that's it. I tried not to be too negative on this one, guys, but there's some trash in this FAQ. It's hard to hide it. So uh, I will talk to you all later. Have a good one.